Today, we are looking at the Big Tree Tech Smart Filament Sensor. It works by detecting whether your filament is moving inward or outward or not. So you can see my setup is having the filament on top. It goes into this um, sponge cleaner, you could say, the gray one. And then it feeds into the sensor and the sensor feeds directly into the extruder. The red piece, the red part that you are seeing is a print from Thingiverse. It holds the sensor perfectly still and it clips onto the frame. There's three wires going out and that three wires is feeding directly into the Raspberry Pi. So sit back because this is going to take a while to get it working with Home Assistant. It's important for me to get it working with Home Assistant so that if something goes wrong, if there's a nozzle clock, if there's a filament sensor running out, then it will alert my mobile, it will alert my whole house by flickering the lights or playing a siren. Setting up the hardware, it's best that you print this SCL file from Thingiverse, undo all the screws, there's a total of six screws, in the sensor itself and then screw the SCL file into your sensor. On the Raspberry side, you'll need three inputs. We're using the 3.3 volt, pin 11 or GPIO 17 and ground. There is a plugged in for Octoprints, but for some reason it does not work for me. Here you can see that the filament test work. It can see that the filament is moving back or forward. But when it comes time to the real deal, on the main page, you don't see it working at, at all. And during printing, it does not work. So we have to use MQTT. To install, I follow this URL, open up your PuTTY and connect to the Raspberry Pi. Run this command, it will install the, uh, the Python. Next, run this command to get this application. Modify the config file as necessary. Let's take a look at the file. Here is my MQTT server. Here are all my credentials. We're using the Raspberry Pi module. You can name it whatever you want. We're using pin 17. Once you're done with your configuration, go ahead and use FTP to upload it to this folder. If you want to test, go ahead and run this command. Mine loads up automatically whenever I start the uh, Octopi to automatically have the script executed when Octoprint started. Go to settings event manager, click on add, and then add the script in. So as soon as it's connected to the printer, go ahead and execute the script. We got the hard part done. Now comes the harder part, getting it all into Home Assistant. Here you can see my full control panel. This is my smart plug. I can flip the switch to turn on the whole thing on and off. I use this switch to connect or disconnect to the printer. I rarely touch this, but I have it there just in case. To shut down the Raspberry Pi, I have it as a switch as well, so I can shut it down safely. It sends an MQTT command to the printer to shut down, and then I can finally flip the switch to shut down the whole thing. This is the automated, this is the automation that monitors the whole situation for the filaments. We'll take a look at, at it later on. To pause the printer, I use MQTT as well. If I fix the filament sensor, if it gets stuck or whatever, then I can just hit resume or pause it as needed. The reason why you're seeing it going on and off like this is because for every rotation, for each minute minute rotation, the filament, the encoder of that sensor is turning on and off on GPIO 17. Let's take a look at the MQTT section on Octoprint itself. To make all this work, you'll need to install Home Assistant Discovery MQTT. MQTT subscribe. On the MQTT side, this is my same host as well. Here are my credentials. On MQTT subscribe, these are some of the commands I use to disconnect, connect to the printer. Here I can control the nozzle temperature, the bed temperature. If I need to shut down Octoprint, this is the command that I use. If the filament is stuck, then I need to pause it immediately. This is all automatic, by the way, we'll, and we'll see it in Home Assistant later. But this is what you need to command the Octoprint to control the printer itself. 
This is the command to resume. Let's take a look at pause and resume. This curly bracket and double quote. There's a space in between in the front right here as well as in the end right here. For resume, it's a little bit complicated, but you get the idea. It's just basically the same thing. Now that you're done with Octoprint, let's head on over to see the Home Assistant side of things. Go into Configuration, Automations. Here's one of my automation for 3D prints. So we need to determine if the filament is stuck on the on position for a long time, right? First, we have to define this. Let's go on, name it whatever you want. I name mine is 3D Filament Smart Sensor On. When it receives via MQTT that the filament is to the on position, then turn on the switch. This switch is what you saw earlier. Conversely, if it gets stuck on the off position, MQTT, topic, payload off. Then go ahead and flip the switch back to the off position. Finally, we have this automation for filament sensor. The trigger will be the filament switch that you saw and defined earlier. If it gets stuck in the off position for 12 seconds, then alert me. Or if it gets stuck in the on position for 12 seconds, alert me. For conditions, it's okay to have this as optional. I honestly don't think I need it, but I'm playing with it for now to, to leave it on as the uh, printing from SD card. The action, if it gets stuck in the on position or off position for 12 seconds, go ahead and pause it with this switch. So let's take a look at what pausing would do. Looking at the pause automation, when the printer status changes to pause, or when that pause button gets flipped to the on position, then send a notification to my phone letting me know that 3D printer has paused. You can go nuts here and just add another action where it will turn on the lights, flip the lights on and off, flashing, or have a siren play a note. For now, I have it to notify my phone. On the octoprint side, if it pause, then go ahead and lift the nozzle up and wait. You can see this in the G-code script. When it pause, do this, lift it up. When it resumes, do this, lowering the nozzle back down and continue printing. One other thing I notice is that when it pause, you cannot touch the printer's control. You have to control everything via the website. So if it pause, go ahead and fix your filament issue and then hit the resume button here on the web interface. Do not hit the resume on the printer itself. I think this is because I don't have the command host installed in the firmware of the printer itself. That's why. Hopefully this works out for you. This filament sensor is a really, really big deal and it should help you avoid costly mistakes when the filament runs out or whenever there's a nozzle clock and then all of a sudden your big prints fail. Let me know if you have any concerns, comments, or questions in the comment section. Thanks for watching.